Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Russell Rock with Rick Connor. What the F was that entire freaking promo about? Mark Kalbacher. She's like the James Ellsworth, the woman. And Corey Castle. I look like Paul London and Brian Kendrick mixed. <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Well, no another special edition of Russell Rock. We got a very special interview lined up today, but before we do that, I'm Rick Connor. I'm Corey Castle. And this is Mark. Mark is here. <laughs> my tent fort. My pillow fort. And this pillow fort. <laughs> We're all set up, man. I got I to gotta get something cool behind me. Corey has the evolving yeah, poster here. You know. What you said is I think by next week I'm going to have it. Hopefully my next unemployment check comes in. I'm going to buy some PVC pipe. I'm going to fill like a little wall. Yeah. Put a tarp behind it. And then I can finally have backgrounds or something besides just... Right. You know. I I did a I did a recording with with Sozio, Sozio and Jude last night. So oh, yeah. uh, that that was why I I when when we go to listen to this to this interview that you guys did, uh, I wasn't a part of it because whilst you were doing that, I was doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know the the back thing, the backdrop thing. Uh, Jeff has like a little poster, just like a little poster printed up of the struggling with Sozio logo. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to get a little projector screen and just put up the thing. So like a little USB projector screen that he's planning on getting. But for now, he's just got a little tiny poster. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, man. We all started yeah. something, right? <laughs> so, yeah, man. Mark, tell us about this interview we're about to get because this was your get here. Yeah, it's a, a very weird get. I think I mentioned on, on the actual interview was uh, – the, the lovely lady that I was seeing at the time we were drunk on my birthday and she's like, Hey, my friend's into wrestling. Would you guys want to like have him on and talk to him? And I thought he was just some dude that was a wrestling nerd like ourselves. <laughs> and then she, sent, then she sent me his email and I looked his name up. And so, uh, this worked out really well for us. Uh, I contacted the gentleman and he is the, uh, Ambassador or spokesperson for the was it, uh, WWN. I forget the, the actual, World Wrestling Network. World Wrestling Network. I, I keep calling it World Wide Wrestling Network. I don't know why. Uh, which covers Evolve, Shine Wrestling, and I uh, kind of lost track of the other. Is Dragon Gate USA a part of it? Dragon, Dragon Gate, yes, is one yeah. of the other. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Trevin Adams. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I said Combat Zone Wrestling is also part of it. Yep. Uh, so his name is Trevin Adams. He is the ambassador and we thought we were going to get maybe 15, 20 minutes out of him, and it ended up being an hour long interview. Uh, you can, uh, definitely check it out and enjoy the video. And if you want to watch the video, the actual video, you can watch Rick's struggle through <laughs> <laughs> an hour trying to pretend he was sober because he did my sister's podcast beforehand. Yeah. And they, I was doing they, another they, podcast before that uh, where I, I drink heavily on that podcast and uh, didn't know we would be coming right into the interview afterwards. So, Is that, is that a regular happening with a, a drunk podcast? Do you do that a lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Ask Something to Do podcast? Yeah, Mark does. Yeah. yeah. Every, uh, well, I used to. <laughs> every podcast with, uh, that I do with Mark's sister, I always have uh, at least three or four drinks. Oh. But that's like once a week. I'm not an alcoholic or anything. Everybody calm down. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, listen, I listen to the show, and I never can tell. Like, Let's hope that you can't tell with this one, because <laughs> I, I tried very hard to not slur any words or anything like that. Well, for me, it was hysterical, because I know Rick, so I know how drunk he was while he was doing it. Can I just yeah. bust my nose open again? How did you, I have a scar. Did you, I have a scar on my nose and some of the lifting equipment I have has a uh, canvas straps to it and I hit the scar and it busts my nose open every oh. now and then. So it looks like I popped a pimple on the tip of my nose and it just bleeds. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, this is a really cool interview. You guys want to check it out. He starts with how he fell in love with wrestling and uh, through ZCW and then uh, New Jersey Pro. And actually how he jumped over to New Jersey Pro into – Getting connected to wrestling. Jer Jersey All Pro? Jersey All Pro, yes. Jersey okay. All Pro. And he uh, goes from Jersey All Pro into becoming now, you know, working with Gabe Sapolsky and his mm -hmm. love for 
Do you think he knows our friend Nick Burke? He does. He does. We were talking about him. I actually, oh, yeah. I actually cool. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. yeah. He actually real. says, <laughs> I think he says the first show you ever saw, Jersey All Pro, Nick Burke will open the show in a, in a tournament. Yeah. Nice. So definitely check it out. And Rick, I don't know if you have music or whatever to introduce his guests. Uh, <laughs> we have no music to segue or anything like that, but um, this is a, a really cool interview. Uh, I hope I don't ruin it for anybody. Um, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy it. So stick around. Trevin Adams, everybody. All right. So I'm going to rub it in. This is my get. Uh, we are bringing in the ambassador of WN. <laughs> no more alcohol. I'm putting that over here. Uh, we're introducing Kevin Adams, who's the ambassador for the WN. Uh, the wind is becoming a bit of an issue, but we got Trevin Adams on the line right now. What's going on, Trevin? How you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? And I apologize. Hopefully, uh, Florida weather doesn't keep picking up. Of course, now that we're starting, here's a wind and a breeze, right? And we don't normally have this this thing called a breeze in Florida. That's not a thousand degrees. It's actually a, a pleasant day right now. But indeed, so Trevin Adams here, ambassador of the World Wrestling Network. Appreciate you guys having me on. So what we were doing before we officially said, hey, why don't we start? Is we were uh, we were just going going down random memory lane, talking about various uh, promotions in Philadelphia. And Rick was talking a bit about his history, and I said, hey, why don't we just kick it off because you'll probably get a kick out of the fact that I, uh, you know, so I grew up in the Philly area as well, um, you know, about a mile outside the, uh, the city in Havertown. And, uh, you know, so I became aware of things like ECW back 95-ish, right? And probably the only time uh, I ever had my, my parents say no to something. They used to let me do whatever the hell I wanted. Uh, but I was in, you know, early high school about at that time. And uh, they said, no, bad area. You can't go there, et cetera. And it was awesome, right? Like, I was like, oh, I want to go so bad. And then by the time I, uh, you know, started college in around 99, arena was still selling out, but I wasn't going to stand with a thousand people and a thousand degrees for what, what was being presented. And I mean that in the most polite way. It wasn't 95, 96 ECW anymore, right? However, ECW folds, a little company called Jersey All Pro Wrestling shows up, right? And they started running the arena actually before Combat Zone did. So my first indie shows were Jersey All Pro Wrestling back in 01. Uh, and I got to the point where I even got to know Fat Frank, some of the other guys, and had it not become, they didn't do well in Philly and moved back just to do in North Jersey, I probably would have started doing stuff with those guys back then. But I was going to school, had an unreliable car, wasn't going to drive to Bayonne regularly to do like trainee stuff with them. But so I almost kind of jumped in then, you know, as opposed to 2013 when I got involved with WWN. But, uh, but yeah, so I kid you not. So, so I guess, I guess you could stereotype me as a Jersey all pro guy. If I was going to stereotype you as a uh, CZW guy, sir. And, uh, but but my my um my uh what's what do they call it olive leaf right or uh, olive branch to you would be I did book through Gulak back in the day when he was the champion you know when he was doing the I'm like the real wrestling champion of CZW at the point in uh, Full Impact Pro we had uh, Trent Beretta was our champion and rarely available uh, so we actually had Drew I was actually sending some of this to, to Mark by a, a common or a mutual friend we actually had Drew versus Timothy Thatcher uh, when no one not only knew who Tim was but you know, that type of style of match hadn't really been done. And this is March 2014. And, you know, by that fall, here we go with what became Evolve style for the next couple of years. Uh, so between that and the fact that, how about this one, uh, Drew Gulak versus Roderick Strong, uh, for first time ever, they actually wrestled one-on-one, -on -one, same weekend, hell of a match. And actually, I had sent Mark a link, again, by a friend, and I can get it to you as well, of a very fun, like, press you know kind of press fake press uh moment the night before i had rob naylor if you know robbie uh host it and uh you know they got a little personal it was really cool and, and uh you know and it's even more cool to look at where those guys are now to say the least right and uh if you guys were tracking so for, for those who aren't familiar world wrestling network one of our brands is called evolve wrestling uh in addition to full impact pro that i just mentioned and uh well right there in philly back in july you may recall we had a uh you know, a little tiny show at the ECW Arena that uh, just happens to be the first show not owned by WWE to be aired live on the network. A very interesting moment. And uh, as somebody who got to ring announce while Drew Gulak was in the ring as Cruiserweight Champion, I totally, the nerd in me popped for it. I was like, wow, not only is this full circle, not only is he an awesome dude, but to then see what he got to do with, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan and so forth at WrestleMania, I've just been tickled pink. So how about that for a random uh, introduction? 
<laughs> I think we all have like weird ways of what we got tied back into uh, wrestling. Exactly. Uh, mine was uh, years ago, and I told Rick this story. I walked in a bar one night, which was Deco. It wasn't even called Z Bar back then. And there was a scraggly dude with, you know, with a beat up motorcycle jacket and like three strippers wrapped around them drinking there. Okay. And they went by the name Raven. <laughs> I was I was wondering if that's who it was gonna be. That's amazing. And uh my I turned around and told my buddy, I was like, that's the ECW world champion over there. And he's like, who? I was like, and he had no, no idea. He just started getting into the NWO. He knew nothing about wrestling. I was like, that, mm-hmm. that's Raven. And he went over and tried to talk to Raven, and Raven wouldn't even admit it was him. And <laughs> he's like, I'm sorry, dude, I don't know who you're talking about. And he, he looked at me and he's like, he's like, I hope it's a compliment. And I looked at him, I was like, Yeah, it's a compliment. He winked at me. And then the weird thing is, over the years, I started seeing him more and more often in like after hours bars, and I became friends with Raven drinking. And that's what really got me tied back into wrestling. Because besides that, I only watched Bret Hart and nothing else because wrestling was so bad back then. And then it was, it was Raven that got me into watching wrestling again, and I got into Jericho and all the other guys. And it's just so funny how that Philly scene was always so small. No, but, but you just called it that. That was that golden era of ECW, era, excuse me, of ECW. I was referring to, right? And uh, clearly, the mistake you made was if you had went up to him and just said, "Hey, look, there's Johnny Polo," then he would have totally recognized and be like, "Oh yeah, that's me. That's me. Um, I manage the, uh, the the not the Mounties, but the Quebecers." Quebecers, yeah, not the Mounties. Have to make that's what I say. <laughs> that's why I said not the Mounties, the Quebecers. <laughs> but no, but, but Mark, you're spot on. And, you know, here's the thing at the end of the day, right? And, and another thing I was mentioning to these guys, not to reveal the exact time we are recording, but, uh, you know, so we were, one of the things we were talking about before official air was, hey, what, what are you doing right now during the apocalypse? And, you know, somebody affiliated with the wrestling company, uh, how in the blue hell are you, are you making any money? And the answer is, well, not really, uh, not a lot. But uh, like everybody, we have a subscription service called Club WWN in our case. It's got the entire Evolve Wrestling, FIP Wrestling, Shine Wrestling, American Combat Wrestling, other promotions. You got a video on demand. You got them live when, God willing, we're all live again. But we also have Dragon Gate USA. And airing right now is actually the first ever Dragon Gate USA show, which came from Philadelphia, by the way, back in July 2009. Um, That was actually part of the significance of the network special was we called it the 10th anniversary. And it was really the 10th anniversary of Dragon Gate but we glommed on Evolve, which really started a year later, but made the argument, look, they're, they're like kissing cousins. I mean, we'll just call it everybody's birthday, right? Uh, yeah. but, but, you know, bot- bottom line is, well, that show is airing right now on YouTube and, and, and our, our Facebook for free as kind of a plug of, hey, you want to see really awesome wrestling? Do you want to see where guys were that you're probably going to be surprised when you see who's on the show, but moreover, as the plug for Club WWE. And by the way, we're going to do this every Thursday at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. Really? Well, I guess I, I stay in Florida very often, so I know the weather is out there. Um, when I, I was just saying um, with what happened with WWE, with uh, all the firings and the furloughs, everything going on, there's a lot of uh, people that are actually infuriated with WWE, and now they can find an alternative. And the cool thing, like I said about WWN, is a lot of the guys that are in NXT and – a lot of the, the actually bigger names in WWE right now are all former Evolve and Dragon Gate guys. So it's kind of good to go to what you guys are as a network to see the next upcoming guys. Yeah, sorry. I just gave Vince your address. He's on the way, if you guys can hear in the background there. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, kidding aside, so it's a crappy time, right? And and I'm not going to pick on any company that's, that's having to do what they're having to do, but if you focus on the talent and like you just said, uh, and people who enjoy professional wrestling to begin with, obviously any talent that, that loses the opportunity to do what they do uh, at the level that they were trying to do it at, uh, that sucks. Right. Yeah. Of course, as, as they always say, you know, one door closes another door opens. So my hunch is there's going to be a lot of folks that not only land on their feet, but land on their feet. Well, and hopefully when they do, it turns into something that is exciting for all of us. Right. You know, there, there, there's nothing more uh, mind-blowing to me is, you know, not just us, but like Progress Wrestling in the UK. You know, the guys, they've been able to borrow from NXT and NXT UK to put into a different setting. And, you know, regardless of whether or not there's, oh, well, you know, WWE let them borrow these people, 
you're getting to see guys that, again, are in a setting. And one of the things we use as a moniker in Evolve, and in fact, other thing we've been doing of releasing a bunch of full shows, which are on our YouTube, was only in Evolve matches, right? And, and that concept of, you know, about a year ago, we had Velveteen Dream versus Orange Cassidy. How the hell is that ever going to happen? Like, seriously, it's never going to In fact, now it's really never going to happen, but <laughs> or for, not for a damn long time. Rick, Rick doesn't get Orange Cassidy. We've been beating him up for months over this. I just don't get <laughs> I just don't get the gimmick. It's uh, other people love it, and that's fantastic. I just it's it's not for me. <laughs> hey, it's it's definitely different strokes for different folks, right? Yeah. You know, but that's but the, you know, obviously, what the point I was going is, hey, I can't believe that happened. You know what I mean? Like those kind of situations. Hell, we did before before anybody would ever imagine that Balter would actually sign with WWE. We actually had Adam Cole defend the then North American Championship that he had. This was a couple of years ago, uh, and it was against Walter. And first off, it was crazy that this here's this title defense outside of the usual umbrella, right? But then the fact that it got to happen. And I, I've got news for everybody, including that July show that I mentioned, that small little WWE Network show. There weren't 700 WWE producers running around. It was us. I mean, actually, it's almost criminal we pulled it off because we are so mom and pop, you couldn't imagine. So it was like a handful of us. They sent some audio dudes and a, and a uh, satellite truck. Don't get me wrong, not complaining. I mean, they were great and all, but... You know, it was like, holy crap, we're, we're doing this. And, uh, oh, by the way, we're doing it ourselves. And even with their talent, we're getting to do stuff. And I bring it up because, again, back to the point of guys that are unfortunately finding themselves without jobs right now, those opportunities to have those kind of, you've never been able to see these matches, let alone bring what they've learned. And I'll tell you right now, just being able to get close to, we were talking about Tomasa Ciampa earlier, right? Being able to have Tomasa's been at, at our last... God, don't, don't, is it going on here now? He's been producing at multiple of all shows. The dude has just soaked up the performance center. And then to watch him like a sponge, you squeeze it a little bit, and just the drops coming out on us is blowing our minds. Let alone imagine what those guys have learned who were there full time. They're about to bring it out to everywhere, right? So it's a proliferation of knowledge. To me, that actually really excites me, especially once again, when all these guys land on their feet. They, they will. I, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat uh, being in the uh, bar business where like you're just basically, it, it was a bad time and people aren't going to make money and everybody's got to do what they can to keep their business going. Uh, they will land on their feet. It's just going to take time. And it's just, it's, it's a little unnerving in the beginning. And then, you know, you, you kind of figure out your groove until, until like those job opportunities do show up. Um, I don't know about you, Rick. Are you you're still working, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have nothing going on except the videos I'm uploading to YouTube. Um, there's a lot of uh, talk right now on the indies of of who's running and who's not. Um, Trevor, is there anyone on uh, the uh, under the WWN umbrella that is still running currently? Not in our crew. Um, you know, we, we had looked at some options. There's a uh, venue that we have a very close relationship with in a uh, city called Port Ritchie, Florida, which is north of Tampa. And, uh, you know, it's called the Gulf View Event Center. And, and we had actually looked at the option of could we pull off doing some stuff there, and especially with the number of talents that just live locally, just to, you know, give them an opportunity, uh, you know, to literally get out there. You can't, you can't imagine how many of these guys want to freaking wrestle, right? They're all going nuts. And you know, between just some of the headaches, of course, of what is and isn't considered uh, essential, and, and I won't, I won't take the bait on that one. I'll leave you that to you guys, right? Uh, but the uh, <laughs> so what is and isn't essential, but also, you know, again, between just what what you can keep open, what can actually work in an empty arena type setting, um, you know, because of the whole situation of how many gatherings you can have, it just hasn't been feasible for us. Uh, kudos to everybody who's who's tried to do it and pulled it off, and. You know, I know some folks had really good ideas and wanted to do it and got themselves just unfortunately stopped uh, by the current situation as well. It's, it's a weird one, man. It's, I don't even know how to even talk about it. <laughs> uh, it and, uh, it's really, really rough. Like, uh, there's a lot of people on the independent circuit that try to make a living with wrestling and are really, really struggling. Um, a lot of promoters, especially, uh, that rely on that extra whatever they're making a month with their their independent company uh not to mention the wrestlers that are trying to make a living off the independent circuit which is incredibly incredibly difficult uh that are really really having a hard time now and the um the added 
craziness that this is with the um with with the WWE releases. It's um it, it's insane that they have absolutely nowhere to go. There's a pretty much only those two shows in town. There's WWE and AEW. Um with the uh the absence of the WWE and it's uh it's it's a really, really hard time. No, and that's true. And, 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 you know, like you guys mentioned, I mean, this isn't, this isn't just us. I mean, this is a lot of aspects of show business, live events. Think of all the people that own these venues that usually would host live events. Um, anybody who's in like, you know, your proverbial, uh, you know, starving artist, indie rock band, um, let alone, like you said, Mark, just the damn bartending and not being able to even do that. I mean, it's, it's not only that I work for live nation. So I also, oh, do... so you really get, yeah. So like, we're like talking about, there, there, there's rumors that they may not have live events until the end of 2020, you know, 2020. They're, they're so scared about doing large, large events. So you're looking at the music industry, sports, uh, you know, pro wrestling, you, you name it, then what, we're all going to do it with craft? Like, how are you going to do that? I mean, Live Nation is probably working on some kind of workaround right now about, about throwing probably concerts you can pay for. But like, the wrestling, not having that fan, that, that fan interaction is really rough. Well, no, it's, it's the truth. And, and, you know, I mean, everybody, uh, I think everybody already knew that, that the fans were one of the, the most key elements, um, to say the least, when it comes to the sport and presentation of professional wrestling. But, you know, I'm sure you remember the old uh, WWE commercial that, you know, there's no us without you. And they had Daniel Bryan come out doing the yeses and everybody was all, uh, you know, he comes out, there's no fans. And, you know, it's crazy. We're living that, right? Um, you know, and but yeah, that, that would be horrible for a lot of industries if the answer really was, uh, you know, no live events for the rest of the calendar year. I can't even picture uh, another eight months of what we're doing right now. Like literally could not picture. I can't picture another eight days. <laughs> I'm going insane. <laughs> I'm making orange, ch- orange cello right now. And I'm making lemon cello in like two days. <laughs> <laughs> well, that 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 I definitely want to join you on, right? I, that I'm looking forward to the weekend to, uh, you know, wake up and say, "Hey, where am I?" You know, so I'll, I'll be home, but not sure what room I'm in. Uh, but no, kidding aside, it, again, it's you know, it's one of those things. It's a crappy situation. However, um, you know, back to the talent, and, and you know, and again, this is you, I think a lot of people have already done a great job to the extent that they can, because I also understand a lot of people are not able to still work, and a lot of people are, you know, <laughs> literally going, "How do I pay my bills?" let alone how do I support things I like. But, you know, for those who can, so many talents have, you know, put out there, like you guys were talking about before air, or maybe you've said it afterwards, either way, T-shirts and, you know, things they're doing. And, you know, we've been trying to get some stuff cooking, actually, with some live streams that uh, as soon as I do, I'll get you guys links. Uh, I'm hoping to pull this off. I've had a bit of a headache with, you know, being able to monetize these appropriately because if I'm going to do something with talent, I want the talent to actually make money. You know what I mean? As much as... uh you know, as much as it's, it's fun to sit there and be like, hey, let's watch a show together for an hour and stream it. You know, that's one thing. But how about if you guys can actually make a paycheck on this? You know, like those are yeah. things that, you know, and I know we're not original on that. A lot of people are trying to do stuff like that. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully in some ways it, uh, you know, helps catch some, catch some of these guys, not just a couple bucks, but also there's some seriously big personalities in pro wrestling. And that's an argument I've, I've, I've made to quite a few people I've tried to push the concept on and, you know, more of those kind of those corporate type jobs that you got to sell them on like, Hey, here's why you should promote this thing for us. Um, you know, again, the personalities are usually what get people excited and interested in wrestling, especially people who don't understand wrestling. And if we live in a world and I get them about to show my age, but if we live in a world where people get paid buku dollars to stream freaking video games, right. And usually I'm not impressed by these personalities and you can take that sound bite and use it against me. I'm okay with that. Right. I mean, these guys, seriously, I'm like, you guys have no charisma and you're pretty boring and you know, and half of your thing is, hey, dude, yeah, thanks for coming on. Whatever your name is, five, six, seven. Thanks for the bits, man. Cool. Okay, back to clickety click. You know, like, I think the wrestlers would just trump these guys and be a hell of a lot more interesting. That's my yeah. entire podcast career right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Rick, you're already more interesting than most of the streamers I've ever, I've ever watched that, that do video game stuff. Again, showing my age, I get it. There's a younger demographic that perhaps likes that. But, you know, like I said, not impressed. <laughs> Rick has, to be quiet. Rick has to be quiet today in the environment he's in. He's got other people in the house. <laughs> Usually screaming Vince McMahon's voice or doing somebody else. <laughs> yeah, usually uh, I'm doing any, uh, a Steve Austin impression or something like that. Right now I, I'm living with someone who works in the medical industry, so <laughs> I have to be quiet while there. 
you know, they're sleeping, they have to get up early. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, it works some long hours, right? So those are the real heroes. You know, and I know it sounds cliche, but I've got quite a few friends that live in that world. And it's just insane right now. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine has 150 people in her unit with COVID right now. So it's, it's real. It's scary. And uh, they're, they're, they're sticking it out, man. There's some, there's some tough people. Well, well, that's it. And especially the situation in New York, you know, as somebody who's run just countless shows, worked with countless talents from that geography, I mean, legitimately, you know, and this isn't one of those like, you know, like, oh, you just say every place is your home and every audience is great and whatever. You know, there's a venue in uh, Queens called Babu, right? And we've run so many of all shows out of, out of Queens. And, and there's just that audience, you know, if I could have bottled them and brought them to the network special, that's what I would have wanted to do. I mean, these guys are just so rabid, awesome fans, great people. You get to know them and you get to know a lot of the talents, once again, that are there, even if they're not working or show, you know, the ones that are helping on the crew and all that stuff. And then when you start to see that some of these guys actually, no kidding, like you were just saying, Mark, uh, not only had it, but have family members who had it, have family members who have died, uh, that hits you at home pretty quick. Okay. Um, question, do you want to keep talking, Trevin, uh, to take a, a quick, we have like a timer on here, and then we would just have to send you another link real quick and do this. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in a rush. If you guys are happy, I'm happy. You want to keep going, Rick? Yeah, uh, uh, the thing with Zoom is if you're not if you're not paying for premium, then they put like a forty minute time limit on you, <laughs> so you have to kind of bail out and then come back in. So if you're if you're cool with it, we'd like to uh, yeah to come back with another one. Absolutely. Maybe by then I'll be out of the the, the damn wind. Sorry about this. There he goes. Hey, am I actually here? Hey, yeah. there, sir. Okay. I'm I'm like the old guy that's like, how do I use Zoom? <laughs> old guy when, when did you say you caught wait um how many years younger are you to me <laughs> i'm always i'm always the elder statesman in all this so well depending on when you were hanging out with raven if you were legitimately drinking at that bar you, you've got me beat sir uh let's see i i joined the military in 97 when i got out of ait it was the end of 97 i, I met him in 97 98 right after he left uh wcw we did the walkout on WCW. So I think it was 98, 99. So I think you've got me by about three years. Yeah, yeah, I met so I'm a 99 graduate guy. Yeah, it was, it was a really weird thing, man, like I said. And it was one of those, like, weird encounters. And then next thing I know, every time I went to a bar and he was there, I had to drink with him. <laughs> <laughs> who won those fights? Oh, it was in the who drank the most. Oh, that guy, that guy's a machine. And I didn't drink, I didn't drink nearly as much as I do now. And uh, funny thing is like, I, I ran into him. I, I'd have to look up the year. That was the year my sister and I hung out, met Steve Austin, Rick out of the picture. And uh, he was there signing autographs and didn't remember who I was at all. <laughs> that, that sounds like Raven. <laughs> So do you, uh, do you, Trevin, do you actually get starstruck at any of these guys you get to work with or talk to or anything like that? Sometimes. I mean, it's, it's one of those, usually when you're, when you're doing business and you're so in the thick of things, you don't have time to think about it. And then you go back and be like, wait a minute, who was just here? You know, like, like we've had a couple times to, you know, have conversations with, um, you know, like as I, the joke is I live around the corner from the damn performance center and uh, full sale. Right. And so a couple of times we've been over there just for, uh, certain tapings and, you know, had a few, few short conversations with like guys like Triple H. And then when we're done, I'm like, oh, I have this action figure. That's weird. You know, but like at the time you're thinking business, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can, I, I can come to that because I've, uh, I've worked in Chicago with Cesaro, uh, you know, back in the day he was Claudio Castagnoli and I've gone to autograph signings where I've, I got to meet him again. I'm like, oh my God, I'm meeting Cesaro. And he's like, yeah, we rode together to Chicago show as you a hole, and I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't Cesaro. That was that was Claudio. This is Cesaro. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cesaro, man. It's completely different. <laughs> he had his hair then. <laughs> he oh, hair. wow. Back then, no, I mean he shaved it. He shaved it. It's it, <laughs> it's consensual. It's not like he went bald. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm, I was wondering. I mean, I have a picture with the rock there. So. Oh, yeah. He had a full head of hair back then. 
<laughs> Man, you guys are shooting on everybody. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Not a shoot. Well, no, uh, you're, you were joking about the police earlier. We uh, we had uh, an interview with uh, Lenny Poffo on here. What's it going on? Two years ago now. Yeah. And, uh, an ambulance rode up in the background. He used that as the excuse to get off the line with us. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a true true worker. Oh, he was not happy at all. He was every well. Our our old host, uh, one of our old partners, kept asking him questions about Macho Man, which he really does not like answering, and he kind of got he kind of got a little angry. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, one topic we can't touch. Let's leave Brandy alone. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So tell me about with Macho Man and uh, <laughs> Miss Elizabeth and that thing where he was locking her in rooms. <laughs> Well, you ever meet that guy or that girl that like the whole career is tied to someone else and the other person was bigger and then you meet them and you forget their entire career as soon as you meet them? That's what happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking up over here. Yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> Honestly, the, that entire conversation was all about Macho Man and Mr. Perfect and Hulk Hogan and everything else except him. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was hey, do, you, do you remember when Perfect took the belt at Saturday Night's Made of Ed and just broke it? That was like unheard of, right? And he's like, "Um, I was there too." No, no, no. Remember, <laughs> Mr. Perfect was there with the belt. It was so cool. <laughs> well, that's that's all our one partner kept asking. He just wanted to know questions about Macho Man's rap album, <laughs> and it just so. so it, so do you do backing vocals on Be a Man? I'm just trying to figure this out. No, but but hey, you know, I, I make these jokes and I really do make them tongue in cheek. Because not only was that dude talented, but that same era, do you guys remember remember the Genius versus Hulk Hogan from Saturday Night Main Event? I mean, that was a match ahead of its time. It was so No, he's he I remember him being that good. And I just forgot. Like for some reason, I just forgot his entire career as soon as he got on the phone. <laughs> It's the limoncello, I understand. Oh, yeah, it's the old Italian Italian liqueurs I make over here. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say, what other, like, um, what the, I had questions. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're fine. No, hey, so, so for real, let me throw one more thing at you, right? And not just sound like it's Shilly McShill Show. Because, uh, again, I'll even try to make it bigger than just the, the WWN side because, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I plug Club WWN, of course. It's basically the only thing we have these days that, you know, might bring any flavor of income. Uh, but but that's serious, again, between supporting the talents or if you have your favorite promotions, believe it or not, they, they a lot of them still sell Blu-rays or, as mentioned, there are so many different places where people are uploading shows and, you know, whether it's the pivot share model where based on the fact that you actually watch it uh, turns into somebody actually making money. Um, in other words, my show's on pivot share. Nobody watched it. Well, guess what? You know, um, and, and so many other models. I mean, this is that time, again, if you can afford it, support it. And if you can't, you know, when we're all back on our feet, at least, you know, hopefully hopefully, folks have appreciated what so many of us have tried to put out there uh, as more just the free content that is both hopefully a distraction, but also a chance to keep you to remember us. So that again, when, when the good times come again, um, you know, can you imagine the first shows? I mean, people are going to be just like exploding. Just everything's going to be exciting. Everybody's going to pop for everything and the talent is probably going to like go balls to the wall from the second the matches start. I'm terrified because uh, for me, like as soon as we start opening the bars again, the the level of drunk that these people are going to get is going <laughs> to blow Rick out of the water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I off oh, that man. drunk? I've only had six or seven. Uh, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, th I think it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. That atmosphere is going to be really fun because uh, people are going to lose their minds just to have. You you start to appreciate stuff again, like after you've, it's been taken away for so long. And uh, I think a lot of the bitter wrestling fans might uh, might uh, turn the page once they can actually see wrestling live again. Yeah, I think it's going to be a raw after mania type of crowd. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely right, and and that's the thing is I think you know. It, and and I mean this in the nicest way. Um, you know, I think I think we all become kind of kind of jaded. You know, you see you've seen it all. You, you, you know, especially folks who go to a lot of shows or watch a lot of shows or so forth. And uh, you know, again, there there's just that moment where you're like, wait a minute, this is you know, this can be fun. Like like I'll be honest, I I if 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 WrestleMania week had happened as planned, you know, I would have probably been sleeping during WrestleMania. Actually, that's a lie. I would have been setting up a ring 
because we had Kaiju Big Battle as soon as it ended. But nor last couple of years, of, if we didn't have something as a post-show, that was when I finally got some damn sleep because I'd have three to four days of nonstop shows that we didn't get any rest, right? And then I'd catch it kind of post-mortem. Uh, and this year I ended up actually watching with a couple old friends that, uh, you know, we, we were, it was kind of like, oh, wait, you know, like it, it can be fun to just sit down and, and appreciate what you're seeing. Um, and, and because I hadn't gotten to watch something like a Mania Live for so long, obviously this was a really uh, different one, but still. Uh, it was kind of fun, you know, it was like a forget what you're doing for a minute. And I, I won't lie that, you know, Rick, maybe I was having some 90 minute IPAs as well, but gosh darn it, it was a good time. <laughs> are you, are you drink it, what are you drinking dogfish head all the way down there? They actually bring Damn that straight. You can get it. It's it's a uh, it, it's the most macro micro brew ever, right? Uh, thank God it's down here. I was gonna say you got Cigar City down there, they're an excellent brewery. Oh, they're great stuff. I have that in my fridge as well. I was gonna say you got a little highlight hidden in the fridge. <laughs> Dude, legit, legit. I totally have. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture later. <laughs> you ever want to talk? Drink? We got uh, one, once I get my podcast back together, we start talking drinking again. <laughs> that sounds beautiful. Well, and for real too, I'd, I'd love to join you guys sometime when I like have you know real things are going on and I have exciting shows to try to you know push on you and be bragging about. Hey, guess who's going to be here? You know that kind yeah, of stuff. It, it, uh, the, just to give a small like background on how we even got to talk. Um, I I was, you know, seeing someone that Trevin's friends with. It was my birthday, and both of us were pretty drunk. And in a passing comment, she mentioned that she was friends with someone that was in wrestling and sent me a bunch of links. But I was so blacked out drunk because <laughs> it was my birthday, and I'm yeah, trapped yeah. in the house. You can't go anywhere. And then I went back on the I went back through the pot the uh, text and found your name. And luckily, you actually responded to me which uh, I'm very happy you did because this, I, I would love you to come back on here and, and, uh, and uh, talk uh, independent wrestling with us. Cause we definitely need someone to do that more on the show. We have Corey, but uh, Corey's been doing a lot of acting projects and stuff like that instead of wrestling. So. We had, and similarly, I'd be happy, you know, if you ever want to talk to some of our guys, um, you know, a lot of them are cool, especially again, you know, they, it, we, we usually look at it as the chance we line them up. Yeah, sure. They're going to plug the next evolve or whatever, but then they get to plug all their other projects, um, which is always good stuff. Right. So my hunch is they would appreciate the fact that you guys are not only street cred, but you know, have, have various experiences when it comes to our, uh, our beloved sport. Oh uh, yeah. We, we, uh, Rick, Rick, uh, has a vast group of, uh, uh, curmudgeons that used to be in the business that also pop on here and, Host some of the shows with us. Uh, Nick Burke who went by Nicky Benz. Yeah, uh, no, I remember Nick Burke. Hell yeah, <laughs> Nick's I a very good friend of ours. Nick Burke. <laughs> so, so, so you tell you tell Nick Burke he was uh, he. I want to say it was him because the that first Jersey All Pro show I went to it was summer '01. But in that show they had Loki win like the cruiserweight gimmick in the opener and then win the um, heavyweight gimmick in the, in the main. And so he actually beat Homicide in the main. And I feel like it was Nick Burke in that opener. I got to go back and find it. That's what it was. That's <laughs> you can actually. find video of that and, and get it for us. So we can, you know, we love like showing like old video of Nick and I'm still Dude, trying. I bet you, I bet you money. I got it on tape in like, the problem is I have a bazillion tapes. I used to buy like everything. You remember all the tape trader days and all that stuff. Uh, I've got volumes and volumes, but I will dig through and I bet you money. I have that show someplace. Good old Rob Feinstein. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, uh, the old RF video, I think uh, Feinstein owes most of his fortune to me because I think I bought every single tape he ever put out. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, th th there, there's something to be said for, uh, especially geographically, when you got a monopoly, and when you're seeing these names that you're like, wait, these two interviews, are you kidding me? Uh, those blew my mind at the time. You've never seen anything like that. Yeah. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for that tape trading, uh, uh, I wouldn't be into wrestling like I am now. Like, uh, I bought a tape. The guy, uh, Doug Gentry, who who passed years ago. Yeah, no, I knew Doug. Yeah, Doug. Doug was one of the guys who used to sell the tapes at the cart. And he turned around. and He's like, "Dude, just watch this 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 VHS." And it's kind of blasphemous to say now, but it was the best of Chris Benoit. And I saw Chris Benoit in Japan. And that yeah, was it. all the Pegasus Kid stuff, right? Oh yeah, and, and uh, you know the uh, Super J Cup with Chris Jericho, and then I ran back and got you know Chris Jericho's all his matches in Japan, and then you know then then I met Raven, and then I ran back and bought his tape, you know, and one of the craziest stories ever was I went to say hi to Doug one day, and he was walking around Franklin 
Stone Mills Mall was super, uh, super crazy in Tajiri the night they wrestled the three-way dance with little, uh, little Guido. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was, I, I miss Doug. He was a good kid, man. He, he was good friends with my brother. No, I, I don't think there's anybody on the planet. Like, you know, you mentioned Rob, obviously, the, 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 the things that can be said. I'll leave those alone, right? <laughs> but what, I don't think there's a human being on the planet that has anything bad to say about Doug. Well, that's what that's what one of Rick's gimmicks was. Was Rick was a uh, kind of a make fun of Ralph Einstein gimmick. Yeah, I was that that a hole in CZW making fun of Feinstein. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to see some tape of that. Oh no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's fine. Hey. That's uh, feather boa and Daisy Duke wearing stuff that I'd rather keep buried. <laughs> Oh, I'm really gonna find that. Oh, no, no. Trevin, we need to, Trevin, if you can find clips of this and then we can video show the video and comment on this. <laughs> hey, you've, you've already given me quite a few nuggets here, and I know people who know people, so give me some time. Oh, that that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. Um. Okay, so let's change topics quickly, and uh, <laughs> let's go to the um. The uh, uh, the Evolve Center because there's been a lot of um, changes this past year with uh, Evolve on the WWE Network. I wanted to talk about that a little bit because that's been a big, a huge uh, that has to have been a huge uprising for Evolve. Like what uh, what changes have been taking place since then? So so the cool thing with that and and you know I I brought it up earlier, but you know the point of of like I said, I mean, we say what you will, and I and I get I'm not complaining when I say this. The fact that you know we can get WWE to lend us talent, you know, I get not everybody gets to do that, but we're still truly an independent organization. And having the opportunity to be on the WWE network, and and I meant what I said earlier. I mean, there was very limited um, WWE involvement in that, and and that in and of itself is crazy, right? If you think about it, and that says a lot about their trust to, to us, but. Regardless, obviously, that was a lot of eyes. Um, and, you know, and, and, and even if those eyes were, you know, eyes then, and you know, we'll put up some, some clips, and folks will be, when are you on the network again? And then, you know, I respond with the, hey, Club WWN, 999 a month. I know it's not as much as what the WWE network gives you. But, no, but you know, regardless, it, it was still really cool. And it, what meant a lot to me was the number of guys and gals that have, have worked hard that either were represented that night or it was – thanks to their contributions and they've been off to, you know, they've now had other adventures, other places, the ring of honors, the new Japan's, the, you know, the AWS, the whatever. And of course there would be an NXT, uh, you know, we got that opportunity and, and that in and of itself was just, you know, it, it was crazy. And, and also being able to see, you know, there's one guy in particular that um, I still would love to see. And I can't believe nobody snatched yet. Uh, AR Fox. And if you guys are familiar with AR Fox, he is just phenomenal. No. Phenomenal. Google the, the name sounds familiar, but I can't. You, I can't. you will love his work, and uh, and you know, for Rick, and he, he still does the CZ dub. Uh, but he he uh, he has trained so many of our young guys that are coming up now too. He's got a school in Atlanta, Georgia, called uh, WWA Four, and and Fox is just amazing. I mean, I've known Fox uh, both from when I was a fan, uh, you know, in the early whatever we call them, twenty tens. <laughs> um, you know, dude, when I first started seeing him, when he was really young, to you know, obviously working with him. And again, if you watch, if, if there's the closest thing I could describe him to would be like guys that are the level of a Pac or a Ricochet when it comes to the insane athletic things they can do. But he makes it his own, and just like those two do, right? They're 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 very special in what they can do in the ring, as well as can work with anybody. And, and that's what's cool to me. And so getting to watch AR Fox on the WWE Network, just a huge pop, you know, from the perspective of, you know, getting to be there. And, and that night, too, they, they won. Uh, he and, and one of his young, um, you know, young trainees, a guy named Leon Ruff, won the tag titles. And, you know, being able to see that happen and know where it happened. I mean, that was just cool as hell. Uh, let alone, actually, part of that before the match went on was, uh, those of you who know Eddie Kingston, uh, he had a live mic on the WWE Network, and by the grace of God, we're still on the air, right? Uh, no, but the, you know that was a hell of a moment too, because I, you know, Kingston's amazing, and uh, you know, and again, for anybody who is not familiar, I know you two know him, but for anybody who's not familiar with Eddie Kingston, if you want to talk about the most authentic promo still in the business today, I mean, this Rick, is the guy that Rick what's that? Eddie, right? I love Eddie Kingston, man. That was my hero when I was in Chikara. 
Oh my God. Because he was, he was a guy that was in Jakara that was not a luchador. And he, he him and Eric Cannon were, were my two favorites because they, that they went out and did a strong style and a submission style that were uh, so far apart from the, like the Mike Quackenbush school of this is how it has to be. If that makes any sense. Um, Kingston was just a, like, he just had that thug attitude, but if you knew him as a person, you realize he was so not that guy. So, like, fine, but give me a cigarette, dog. Like, that was his catchphrase for me in the background, and, 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 and you know, backstage. So I 100% love Andy Kingston. <laughs> no, and, 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 no and, and again, like you said, you know, Eddie, Eddie, and at that time, too, so Cannon's another cool guy. But, but at that time, they were, uh, you know, when, when the whole thing went on with Shakara and Ring of Honor, you know, Eddie, Eddie was the guy, uh, I want to say it was, it was 17, right, that he ended up working. Uh, they did, like, a pay-per-view thing, if I remember correctly, right? I'm, I'm not, if I'm not confusing who, who wrestled whom. Um, and that was, what, mid, what was that? Oh, God. I mean, you know you're old when you're like, what year was it? Maybe 2011, something like that? Something like you that. Brought up, you brought up Mr. Perfect breaking the belt. I forgot that. <laughs> really? That's how they got rid of the old belt. <laughs> I forgot that. That's how long ago that was. That's how they brought in the um the uh, the winged eagle belt that everybody loves. Yes. Yeah, actually, I, I'm also a big fan of the uh, the winged eagle belt, but but of course it's it went you know there was one one non pay per view show a quarter and like one pay per view if you're lucky a quarter. It's a lot easier to remember the shows than you know when there's seven hundred thousand things that have happened. And I'm not complaining when I say it. It's just you know you can obviously remember certain things a lot more vividly when you don't have anything else to compare it to. Yeah, if you're a wrestling geek at this time, it's it's great because there's so much to see. But like, I can't absorb any of it in memory anymore because of how much is going on. It's no, just you, too much. No, you're spot on. Even even the like, there's there's still some of the more recent evolves that I can tell you. Oh yeah, that was evolve 125. It was last year's WrestleMania weekend. It was cool. Kyle O'Reilly versus Austin Theory in the main event. Hell of a hell of a show. You know, like that one I remember the number obviously, and then 131 was the, the network special, but. You know, I, I used to be able to tell you by the show, like, oh, yeah, this is where it was, this, this, and then and I'm working the shows, right? Let alone, you know, like we talked about Full Impact Pro earlier. Like, I'm involved in, in, in booking the damn shows, and I'm like, what do we do when? Like, obviously, I need to drop those March shows because I remember them vividly. But if you just go, hey, tell me about, you know, whatever, July 2018, what'd you guys do on that that weekend? And I'd be like, uh, where's, where's, uh, where's the, the case match on it? <laughs> And then as soon as I read it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what happened. But, man, I. <laughs> so you do actually book the shows also. And, and, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, uh, the proverbial cook in the kitchen, but not Evolve is absolutely Gabe Sapolsky. So, I again, Evolve, I'm, a, I'm involved in production. I already mentioned, you know, some of the announcing and so forth. But um, FIP, American Combat Wrestling, I, you know, I do get the opportunity to, to help with some of that stuff. Uh, Shine Wrestling, I, I'm more, again, more the production guy. Um, but yeah, I know it's, it's, you know, it's, it's cool getting to be involved in numerous aspects, but you know, one thing I'd remind folks is, and, and again, I, I think Rick will back me up on this, uh, you know, for, for the cool sounding things, there's a lot of, oh shit, the ring's not here yet. We got to get it set up. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're in a suit, get the damn thing up. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, like hey, chairs got to get done and, you know, like we do a lot of grunt work and unfun things and I'm not complaining when I say it, uh, but it's, I meant when I said we're mom and pop earlier, you know, <laughs> You're driving in a van, squished with 18 people, and <laughs> time to unload. And you know, we, we do a lot of that. But <laughs> on the side, we also get to have a little bit of fun. Yeah, believe me, I, you know, being in the uh, Live Nation, there's a lot of ugly stuff to to getting it set up and ready to go. And you know, most people only see running up to the stage and then the band performing, and then they leave and buy a T-shirt. They don't really see what it takes to get all that up and running. And Absolutely. And and again, I don't say that to complain it's more the you know i've had quite a few folks come up to me they're like oh dude like you you know it sounds like you get to do some cool things how did you get involved in this and then i start to go well here's step one if you show up to the building and you're there for setup and stay all the way through the end by the way if, you, if you're anyone on the planet indie wrestler whoever who's come in and said hey i'm here to help stay to the gosh darn end i mean that is like i can't tell you how many people are like well i helped out and you know you, you stopped looking for a second i've run away right um and then we notice trust me but no, but, but the point is, you know, again, that that's really step one. I mean, if, if you're there helping, I'm going to be like, wait a minute, 
you know, uh, Mark, are you, are you talented? Tell me a little more about what you actually do. But in the meantime, I need hands on deck and, you know, the, you come up to me and say, Hey, I'm a ring announcer. I'm like, that's great. Um, can you set up the damn building please? And then we'll talk about other things later. Now you see it's just drinking heavily. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know what? If you don't hurt anybody else and you get my chair set up and taken down, I'm a fan. <laughs> I, I think I think they should do that anyway. It gives you more of a level of appreciation of what you're doing anyway. It's like building everything from the ground up, setting the chairs well, up, setting you know, all that. I think it really when and then when you go into that ring and wrestle and those people are there, I think it gives you more of a, like a an appreciation and more like like you did something. You know, I, I don't know. For me, because I'm a workaholic, so that that stuff appeals to me. Well, no, and but no, and 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 obviously, yes. Yeah. So so it, it it sounds like you're a hardworking dude. So yes, there. In some ways, it is kind of cool to be like, ooh, you know, like we already. I joked about the, the cooks in the k- kitchen. You're like, hey man, I actually, you know, slaughtered the beast outside, helped cook the damn thing, made sure he ate it, cleaned it up, and man, I feel accomplished. But but even then, let's say that's not your dream, and you want to be Guy Fieri or he's a cook, right? Uh, I don't know anybody, but but you get where I'm going of. You know, the bottom line is it's the proverbial pay the dues. And, you know, then by the time you are in a WWE and you're showing up in literally a stadium for a WrestleMania, you really appreciate the army it took to set it up. And your shirt's all going to be a hell of a lot more, you know, polite as well to these kind of folks instead of coming in. And, you know, if you, if you have your butt wiped from day one, um, you're going to be blown away the day you have to wipe your own butt. Yep. And if it's not, if you're looking to get into the wrestling business, business and it's not absolutely awesome for you to watch the show that you helped set that ring up for like, like to look at a ring and be like hey yeah you see that that show that we, you just watched i helped build that ring like that's awesome if you're that much of a wrestling fan like that's fantastic and if it's not fantastic for you then you should not be in this business no you're spot on right and and you know, and and I know it's not everybody gets to see it, but um, even NXT and especially the leaks they do here in Florida, um, you know, they're the ring crew, right? You know, and, and and it don't matter who you are, by the way, you're the ring crew, right? And and that's one of those things too that I think is humbling in in a, and I mean it in a polite way that you know certain folks that have been in the sport for so long are hey, it's you know in some ways wow I'm I'm helping do this, but you know by the same token, at least it kind of remind you certain things, but also so. I think it's motivating to the guys that have come in and never worked, say, indies, or, you know, even if they did, weren't on too long before they got snatched or whatever, you know, it kind of shows them it's the camaraderie, you know, Mark, you were talking about the military earlier. You know, I'd argue in a lot of ways, it's kind of like the NCOs working together and you got the senior NCOs teaching the, you know, the more junior folks what to do. No, it's, it's a lot like that. Uh, I, and then the weird thing is I tend to, work in businesses where it has that mentality or I, I'm kind of miserable, miserable in it. Like I, I need that whole camaraderie. Like when we, like I said, even with just bartending and venues, we're, we're a squad. If we don't work <laughs> as hard as possible because we split the money across the board, then you know, the, you're going to bring everybody down. You're not going to make as much money. So we're a team from, from top to bottom to make sure everybody makes money. So, and you, you always look, out and you cover for people and you help us because everybody has bad days too so we all help each other out and to not be like that i I can't handle working in businesses like that not spot on my friend this is fun i I like you i like you guys have uh fun fun perspectives on things it's always nice to uh you know talk to folks who have lived life and i mean that in a very like complimentary way um i think there's a lot of folks who have not yeah well (laughs) Right now, nobody's living life. <laughs> yeah, we're living different lives, that's for sure. <laughs> well, at least you get to walk around lovely Florida, and we're sitting up here, and it's 30-something degrees today. Now that there's nobody, now that there's nobody outside driving cars, they're going to New York. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, so, so I obviously growing up up there and pretty much living in the general area until my late twenties. I mean, I still like it cold and, 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 you know, like I have no problem coming up and folks will be like, Oh man, it's your blood thinned out. And it hasn't yet. Um, and actually today really is legitimately like coolish, uh, for Florida wise, but it's been hot as heck. Uh, I've cursed multiple times. I don't know why I just cleaned that one up. Hot as hell for, for just so much. Um, you know, so we've been, we've went right back to the Florida, you know how it goes. It's like summer or slight summer. Um, uh, but, but I will admit like a night like tonight where it's actually legitimately nice. And there was a cool breeze as you heard, 
this is one of those moments where I'm like, okay, okay, I guess I guess Florida's not so bad, you know. But now the other uh, 360 some days of a year, it's hot as hell. <laughs> I, I used to live out in Melbourne, so I, I know how Florida can be. Oh, you really know, yeah, and you you know all about the humidity. Not the Philly's not humid, but you know. I, I know about the humidity and the forty-year-old divorcees. Yes, I know very well. <laughs> <laughs> is, that your, is that your Rolodex? <laughs> uh, I I used to work as an engineer in uh, our training facilities down there, so <laughs> we would. Uh, there's a there's only two bars in Melbourne. It's one's an Irish pub, I can't remember, and another one's on the water called Lou's Blues. And if you went to lose blues on the wrong night, and I was in my early 30s at the time, I would have like 40 something year old divorced women like literally gripping me up and drag me on the dance floor, grip me up, drag me across the bar. It was it was brutal. Unless they were actually attractive, then it was a different story. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then suddenly you're like, wait a minute, it sounds <laughs> lovely. So, Trevor, yeah, we only got a couple uh, a, a couple more uh, minutes with you. Um, as a, uh, a a person who does for a person who doesn't watch anything on the indies other than you know what they see on and on the WWE network or in AEW or wherever, uh, who is on who, who is under the WWN umbrella that we should watch out for? Who who's the person that like we're going to see on TV very soon? So a lot of my guys have been stashed that normally I give you names of, uh, um, and, and I say that in a good way, right? Um, I, you know, one of our most recent guys to graduate is actually Austin Theory, who, um, yeah. you know, obviously, obviously wouldn't have quite imagined him on uh, as part of WrestleMania. Uh, I don't think <laughs> I don't think that was the plan, given he was originally going to work, work our shows, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Um, you know, we had quite a few guys that were going to be part of the concept we had called Accelerate, uh, but a couple guys that um, you know, and they they work other areas too um, that. You know, so some folks may be familiar, like the name I'm about to bring up, Kurt Stallion, right? So, so Stallion's a guy that a lot of folks would know in the Midwest, uh, you know, know in Texas and so forth. Kurt is just huge personality, um, but like I say a huge personality, but he's chill. He's almost like, and he and Matt Riddle are buddies. Uh, in fact, we got to have a thing where they tagged up um, and, and they insisted on being announced as the Wild Stallions, by the way. Uh, which was a very hilarious moment. Uh, but that match uh, where they tagged up actually was in Chicago. That, that is on the, um, the, the WWE Live uh, YouTube. So you can actually see that match for free. Uh, but I bring up Kurt because he's got one of those, like, it's chill, but it comes out in such a loud, good way. Uh, and then when he is actually angry, you feel it. And, um, you know, and he's, he's one of those dudes. He's not huge by any means um, physically, but he can go. He can go with bigger dudes. Um, just a, a guy definitely to look out for and um, you know and the kind of guy that again I will be shocked if he's not um, snatched sooner than later uh, similar but different uh, our current of all champion Josh Briggs uh, Josh is only a couple of years in the sport and you know he's got he's got the the god-given gift of you know he'd be in whatever he is six five six six or something like that bigger dude um, but you know bottom line again he can go he's physical he's got great conditioning um, he's starting to, to get in his own when it comes to really understanding who he is so I'm really excited to see over the next couple of years, uh, you know, whether it's still with us or again, already, already in, you know, the E or someplace similar um, where Josh goes and, and his foil in the world right now is a guy named Anthony Green, um, who, who's another guy that a lot of folks who watch say beyond wrestling and, and other things more in the Northeast uh, towards the Boston area. Uh, you know, Green is one of those guys that, um, you know, just in the last year and a half, I would say another guy who's kind of found his inner asshole in his case. Um, you know, just doing really well for himself. And, um, you know, a, a guy that, again, I think will be on people's radars. And, you know, th those three, um, you know, as mentioned, they both, they, you know, or they've, in the case of Briggs and um, Green, um, some folks who are beyond fans might have known them first. They're Stallion, like the AWs and a few other places. But, you know, what they've done together under that um, Evolve umbrella, so to speak, I'm getting to work with guys that are veterans like the Eddie Kingston's we mentioned um, earlier and guys that also get to periodically come in from say WWE, uh, you know, those, those, what I call only in evolved matches, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool stuff. And, and, and even AR Fox, who I talked about earlier, you know, I'm telling you right now, if you're not familiar with Fox and, and some of the young guys under him, like Leon Ruff, who I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the, that whole crew, they call them the Skulk. So, you know, Skulk is a, I guess a group of young Foxes or something along those lines, hence the name. Uh, I know when they first tried to explain that to me, I was like, the what? How do you say that? Skunk? Oh, no. Skunk. Okay. 
but it's it's there's so many young guys and you know Russ was probably one of one of the first guys to um you know kind of jump up from that skulk umbrella albeit maybe a year before him was austin theory because ar fox actually trained austin theory by the way um but the you know so you got guys like Russ, but now right now there's there there's two other young guys um adrian lannis um liam gray who are actually the fip world tag champs right now uh but they, they were in the position where they could have had a shot at the evolved tag team championship uh that meeting weekend um, and then, and then ultimately, um, there's an even younger dude in that crew called Bobby Flacco, who's been kicking butt in some of our, our other brands like American combat wrestling. Um, you know, that whole Fox crew, again, I think people are going to look at them and, and like everybody used to look at, um, you know, some of the crew, like the New York guys and the number of guys that like say the homicides had his hands in back in the day. I think they're going to look at that crew and be like, Whoa, those guys all, all were running buddies together, you know? And, and that to me is, is exciting to, to see them. And then on the lady side, um, you, you may have seen Brandy Lauren before. She was actually on the network special. I had a hell of a match against Shotzi Blackheart, who's done quite well for herself um, since then, um, you know, now in NXT. And, um, you know, Brandy's another one who has uh, for sure found her in her asshole. She's with Anthony Green, um, you know, a young lady who not only not only is knows how to make you hate her, uh, but can go. And, you know, and recently one of, one of our uh, actual ladies who's been a trainee coming through our own training center in WWN, named Avery Taylor, um, recently at the beginning of the calendar year, uh, earned her opportunity to have an evolved contract. And, you know, and that's another young person I'm kind of excited to see, you know, here's somebody who's, you know, young and hungry and excited and, uh, you know, still, still like, you know, isn't, isn't jaded. And I mean that in a really good way, albeit when she becomes jaded, she's probably gonna be twice as good, um, if that makes some sense. Uh, but, you know, that, that's... On the lady side, you know, there, there, there are two more to look for. And, and that's just going through the evolved set of folks. You know, there, there, there's other guys like the, the Troy Hollywoods and the Hunter Laws who've been killing it in FIP and ACW. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to be able to see that mix of, you know, the guys that are, are just so hungry, um, just kill it, killing it, and then getting to work with guys from other areas here as they travel around the country and then come back that much better. So... I know I just named like 20 people and was trying not to <laughs> well, hey, leave just, anybody out. Just like, now, if you can see there's a timer in front of you. There's only like four minutes left. Um, I, I, I know we're running out of time. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my excuse. That's going to be my Lanny Poffo uh, excuse. <laughs> where, That's where my can, excuse where can for not naming you? everybody. Where can people reach you if they want to like follow you or anything like that? So, so for sure, first and foremost, um, I would point at WWN Live, which is stands for World Wrestling Network, so WWNLive.com. Uh, that's really our, our entry point. It's got all the social media, all that stuff. Um, okay. That said, that's also where that Club WWN subscription I talked about is. It's got links to our YouTube, where, as I mentioned, we've been putting up a bunch of free shows and matches. Um, and similarly, uh, we've been doing that on Facebook as well. Me personally, as Trevin Adams. Uh, I, you can find me on both the Twitters and the Instagrams as underscore Trevin, underscore Adams, because some other butt had beat me to Trevin Adams, I believe. Uh, that's why I probably did the underscore thing at the time and I've kept it since, you know, um, awesome. so that, that's one easy way to find me and, you know, always happy to interact with folks. I, Trevin, seriously, really appreciate this, man. Like, uh, you can actually talk. You didn't sound like a jaded, we, with the exception of Jerry Lawler, most of the guys we get on here are very jaded. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's a really good dude, by the way, but yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. Uh, no, just thank you, man. And, uh, this was, if you ever want to pop on or you have something you want to talk about and you want to hit us up. And uh, we can set it up for you to come on and push something or you want one of the guys to come on and talk. Just let me know, man. You have my email. Absolutely. Yeah. You have Rick's email. Oh, man. definitely. This no, is as soon as, 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 no, seriously, for me too, obviously, right? I'm having a ball. And, and as soon as things are, are up and running again, uh, first off, I'm happy to, to, to hook up and chat with you guys anytime. But, you know, once we like, no kidding, hey, there are shows to promote or things to promote, I, I'd love the sense of the talent because I think, the, again, they'll appreciate the fact that you guys have a, a really, you know, good perspective when it comes to things. and you know, would actually probably be not only entertaining to talk to you, but have insightful things to ask. All right, man. Thanks a lot, dude. I really appreciate this. Thank you very, yeah, very much. We really appreciate it. No, thank you both, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a good night. Trevin Adams. Thanks, you. Trevin Thanks Adams, lot, everybody. So that was our interview with Trevin Adams. Well, uh, it was it's a great interview. Uh, I really enjoyed it from what I remember of it. And uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully everybody uh, enjoyed Trevin. it as well. Uh, I thought Trevin did a great job. He was very entertaining. Uh, yeah. I, really, I really appreciate him for popping on. And I appreciate Rick muscling through. 
eight vodka and Red Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't stop either, did I? I just kept drinking through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I thought you. I thought you would stop, and the next thing I know, I saw you making a drink in the middle. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I have to, once I start drinking, I have to keep drinking until I go to sleep because if I don't, I get these like really massive migraine headaches. Like they're really, really horrible. So mm. it was either keep drinking or deal with just being in pain for the whole interview. Mm. Luckily I didn't bleed all through that interview. Jeez. That, <laughs> that sounds like an alcohol problem. <laughs> uh, I don't, I think it's just a Northeast Philly kid thing. Cause I get, <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta drink till I'm asleep, or else I don't like it anymore. I, I have to go to bed immediately after drinking, or I usually end up sobering up and being hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Does a red wine give you a headache? Yeah, eventually. <laughs> uh, I guess we should do uh, Trevin Adams if you want to check him out. It's his Twitter's at underscore Trevin underscore Adams on Twitter, mm -hmm. and. I guess check out his dogs on Instagram. Yeah, you can check out his dogs, which is Instagram is pretty much, just, I think it's the same thing, underscore Trevin, underscore Adams. Well, we can put it in the description of the episode, Probs, right? Yeah. Oh, we're saying goodbye. <laughs> we're saying goodbye. Well, you know, uh, spe special little, little thank you to Trevin for doing the episode. Sorry I, I couldn't be a part of it. And I uh, appreciate your time and your effort. And I really hope that this is the beginning of a cool resource for us and for you. Yeah, man. That's, I, that's, I, he used the one actually offered, which was really cool. So hopefully uh, we can start something with him and have some independent guys come on here and get the, you know, get their name out there to people. I and, can't tell that we are going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's beginning, beginning of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, Anybody want to throw anything out there before we uh, before we wrap up the show? Um, shout out to the family, friends, loved ones of Howard Finkel. Uh, yeah. Rest in peace, Howard. Uh, Howard Finkel. Uh, I know that's a big a big thing, and you know we'll we'll do a full episode and we'll talk more about it um, yeah. <clears throat> later, like the next week or whatever, whatever next week's episode is going to be when we record that. But uh, really important to our you know, to all of our childhoods, uh, hearing, hearing that, that name and Nick Burke, Nick Burke used to have, uh, he, he hassled Fink at a show to do his voicemail, his outgoing voicemail message. So he was like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Nick Burke's voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Burke's good with stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I think it was probably at Eric Arjulo's wedding or something. Mm. Right, well, I have nothing to plug. I'm going to crawl back in my pillow fort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, check out, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to check out the video of it, it's going to be up on YouTube, tinyworld.com slash YouTube, Rick Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R. Uh, you can check out all the past episodes of Wrestle Rocks that we have recorded. They're up there, uh, as well as a whole bunch of pro wrestling. So check it on out. Yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification if we go live. Because sometimes you do that, and it's a lot of fun for all of us, and you guys too, hopefully. And drop a yeah, and drop a like on it as well. This way, we know what you like, what you don't like, and uh, it helps us out if um, we want to do something like this in the future. So, if you like it, give it a like. That will about do it for this episode. We're going to come back this week with uh, with another episode. So uh, stay tuned for the uh, the old school wrestle rock that will be happening this weekend. And um, until then, I'm Rick Connor. Corey Castle. Mark Kalbacher. I just realized I'm pointing, but you can't see who I'm pointing at. Because it's a Brady Bunch. I'm pointing you, at my like a bunch of us around. <laughs> Hey, Mark, I'm looking at you. Hey. <laughs> Brady Bunch. Hey, Alice. Join us again for another episode of Rassle Rock. This has been Jay Davis speaking. <laughs>